All right, let's bring in our closers. We've got Oliver Persh, uh, 1879 Advisors, Chief Market Strategist, Todd Horowitz, the Bubba Show host, both with me. Oh, Todd, it's good to see you. What do you make of all this? <laughs> Cheryl, double duty for you. You've been working like you've been working great, doing a great job. Uh, look, at, I, I think that the markets are going lower. As I've said to you on your show before, I think that we're in the early stages of a recession. Obviously, the coronavirus accelerated some of the selling, but I think when you have to, when the Fed has to continue to infuse liquidity into a market, that is not a healthy sign. And I think we're going lower. I think the rally you just saw, those great rallies, look so powerful. They usually fail, and that's what we saw uh, after the three big rallies. I think we're going significantly lower here, and we will take out the lows, in my opinion. You know, here's the thing, Oliver. I mean, we're just seeing headlines cross on Walt Disney. Their parks, they're going to they're gonna have to leave them closed until further notice. I mean, there is no, for these major American companies, and we, we rely on them to tell us where they're going and what they're doing. They can't tell us anything. It's got to be a little frustrating as an investor for you. Of course it is. It's very frustrating, but there's, there's a human toll. There's the economic toll. But I think this was a very interesting week because a few things happened that were very positive. Uh, and they, they are really the fundamental reason why stocks rallied earlier in the week and rallied as sharply as they did. Number one, credit markets stabilized significantly, meaning that the worst fears about credit are effectively off the table. And I think that's very important for your viewers to understand because credit has a much longer lasting impact on a company than what its stock price is doing. Uh, secondly, you finally saw the government stepping up and taking real action, not just in the stimulus package, but also in terms of policy. And then thirdly, you know, investors recognized that some of these things were just being sold and being thrown out with the bathwater, and that's just too much. Mm -hmm. Do I believe that we can retest the lows of, uh, said about a week ago? Yes, I do. Do sure. I think there's more volatility ahead? Absolutely. Sure. But there's also green shoots, and people should remember that. Yeah, I mean, Todd, he brings up some great points. That, again, the unknown. The virus is the market, and the virus is the economy. We got that 3.2 million read on jobless claims, Todd. And I'm curious what you think about the overall economy, because we are a consumer-driven economy, 70 percent of GDP. We, we spend money. This is what we do, and we're not doing it right now. We live by the month, and by right now we're not going out, so it's hard to spend money. There's no baseball games. There's no basketball games. There's no Disney. There's no place to go. So you're going to take the money that you're going to get. You're going to put it in your pocket and not do anything with it. Just pay your bills. That's not going to create a lot of movement. I think yesterday's 3.2 million is only going to get bigger. But again, remember, it beat the expectations by 20 percent, which is what caused the big rally, because markets have a tendency of pricing things in ahead of time. So, again, I think the overall economy is struggling anyways before we got here, and now I think it's in a little bit of trouble. But, again, if you're an investor, stay the course. They're going to come yeah. back, and I would say 10 years from now, we'll be up the average of 8, 8.5% eight year over year as we've been for 150 years. So I don't think that's going to change. So investors should not worry about what's happening day to day. It's too fast. The markets are moving too fast, and it's too hard to keep track of them. So just let your positions work and continue to buy when you have extra capital yeah. and, and make that an opportunity. And there you go. Oliver, yep. last word. What are you buying? Uh, well, we're buying growth companies. We're buying companies where a one or two uh, quarter delay of revenues such as Microsoft, Adobe, Cisco uh, is ultimately not going to matter. But I would say don't stay the course. Take advantage of some tax um, loss selling if you can and reposition your portfolio to reflect the new reality because there are going to be some big winners in this and there are going to be some laggards and losers. And you don't want to hold on to, to your losers at this point. Yeah, I'm gonna you can say I got to say, though, Todd, and I, I will give you the last word. We do got to run. But, you know, not every company, we, were, we had records a month ago. Apple didn't just fall apart. This is a virus. This isn't their fault. Well, yeah, but we, we assumed that Apple would probably sell off. Again, just remember one thing. If you're buying good, solid companies, then you can hold on to them. Again, you always want to dump your dogs. But, again, you don't want to be an active trader in this market. You want to have good, solid companies that are built strong and that are going to be around 10 years from now. And you can buy those. You can hold those. Losers or not, again, I'm not a big fan of tax selling. I think you hold on to what you have and not worry about it. Again, you want to build the portfolio, not try yeah. to trade in and out of it, because most of the time you lose right. if you try to do that. Well, you know, you both have really good points. I think it also depends on the personal timeline that our viewers have. Bubba, Oliver, thank you very much. I had to say that, Todd. Todd Thanks, Bubba Horowitz. All right, guys, thank you so much. <laughs>